We're back to the Total Tutor Show, powered by the Insightful Players series, TotalTutor.net for more information, Twitter, Total Tutor, Neil S. Haley, Facebook, and SimplyG.com for the Simply G Radio Network, our sponsor. And I'm so excited always for the Insightful Players series. And the way I kind of could describe it is basically uh, Chrissy has is teaming up with the NFL bringing these fantastic former NFL players and current NFL players that are looking to empower youth and telling unbelievable stories. You can go to insightfulplayer.com to purchase the book and learn more about uh, Chrissy Carew. And also they're doing some school assemblies, a fantastic thing. And Jarrett, you flat out love the insightful player series. Don't you, Jarrett? How are you? That uh, no question about it. I walk away from these interviews inspired uh, every week, and not just momentarily inspired, um, and inspired to just go a, 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 another week until we get an, a, another terrific interview. Well, absolutely, and it's it's always exciting uh, to welcome our our insightful player, former NFL player Corey Lucci. Corey, thanks for calling. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much for for having me on, and it's a pleasure and. Happy Halloween to you, I guess. Yes, happy Halloween, and uh, for people, especially uh, that have already had Halloween, as well by the time this airs. But Corey, really, unbelievably enough, uh, your story is so interesting because again, it speaks to us, Jarrett, in so many ways. Because uh, growing up, you uh, you stuttered, and this was really yeah. a, diff- a difficult situation to deal with in school, wasn't it, Corey? Oh my gosh! Listen, not just school, man. Just, um, <laughs> just honestly, trying to live, uh, trying to, trying to, to do simple, simple little, low, low t- um, things in the house, such as answering the phone, having a conversation, uh, you know, telling a person that you were hungry. It just, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was very, very hard. Believe me, very, very hard. And uh, how kids would uh, treat you, that, that's, that's a hard thing as well because you're just embarrassed to really kind of show your true self because you, you don't know how those words are coming out. Right. In fact, you know, I, I almost think about it, you know, I guess in, in today's terms, so now I'm, what, 40, 42, so it's been a long, 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 long time ago since I was in um, uh, school. But, you know, when you hear all of these topics now coming out about about the bullying and, 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 and kids and, and um, you know, obviously taking their own lives. Um, you know, I, I sit back and I stop and think, I was like, wow, well, you know, I stuttered, but I was also a big kid. So believe it or not, I didn't have to worry about worry about being, being quote unquote bullied, but obviously I got uh, picked at, you know, picked on. And, and for me guys, um, I really thank my parents um, because I finally reached a point, I guess, God, going into my 10th birthday, man, I was like, you know what? This is, this is who I am. This is how God, God made me. And obviously I'm not going to change. So either I can do one of two things. I can shut up and I can become a mute or I can keep on talking. And what I realized was that not only did I keep Keep on, keep on talking. But if you talk to most of my friends these days, they'll tell you that I don't ever shut up. So, <laughs> so for me, uh, it was kind of, it was kind of one of those things where um, now, I mean, obviously, I, 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 I did go through, go through, go through therapy. Um, but for me, guys, seriously, it was, it was a thing where. Um, I remember, like I said, being 10, 11, going into junior junior high school, and something triggered in me. It was like, wow, you know what? Anytime I want to talk to a girl, I never stutter. Now, this is this is crazy talk here, all right? Anytime I saw a girl that I thought that was so cute, I would never stutter. But as soon as I would, as soon as I would like walk away, I would, I would start like stuttering, right? So, and, and of course, for you, you know that for ninety nine percent of males, it's the opposite. We, okay. You know, okay. We, don't, we don't know what to talk about to a beautiful girl. So, uh, so I think we can relate to a small group. <laughs> okay. But, so, you know, 
I guess you could say through my own own uh, own self analysis, I started like realizing this. I was like, well, this is strange. What what is it that when I'm talking to a girl, I don't don't actually stutter? So, um, you know, what I realized was that oh, because I was taking my time. I was truly taking my time and, and you know, letting the words 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 flow. Now listen, God, I'm forty two years old now. And the irony in all this is now I speak for a living. Okay. So you want to talk about something crazy. You know, you you you're, you're now having a guy on your show and I'm serious and I'm not being being funny. I'm not trying to make trying to make light of this. I could not put together a sentence to save my life, probably from the age of, I don't know, from the time I first started talking to fifth grade. And I'm right. serious. Exactly. Um, and um, and now, you know, I, I'm going all around the uh, country speaking, talking about living your best life now and, and, and facing, facing um, quote-unquote, challenges. And I can look. Hey, the the hair is sort of stand up on my on my arms at times because it's like, wow, this is weird. Yeah. Uh, this is the same, you know, now grown man who used to be a kid that 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 couldn't even finish a that one sentence, and now I'm serious. I'm I'm literally you know talking in, in front of thousands of thousands of uh, of uh, people. Now, what I will tell you is this: um, even now, I still stutter. You know, I don't even think about it. Though. It's so, it's sort of weird because what I what I also realize is that, believe it or not, guys, everyone, I don't care who you are, everybody sort of gets hung up on a word or or say a um or hear right. this or that at that at times. And for me, what I really, 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 really figured out was that it was pressure moments. It was times where I felt stressed. That, that my vocal cords would just lock up. Yes. And I just simply learned to just sort of take a deep breath and just release it. Now, you know, I do a lot of things these days and I'm a you know, I, I'm a I'm a former athlete but you know, but I'm also a yogi. I try and do do Brooklyn yoga at least three to four days a week. What I found is that I live my life, man, based off of a uh, principle of just simply being centered. Yes. And you know, I don't know where you guys are at, but I'm 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 in New York City, and things are pretty hectic here, <laughs> and it's never centered. Okay, bleeding. All right. Right. Okay. In, in New York City. Uh, well, oh, my gosh. Trust me. So, very, very hard to be. So, Corey, basically, through that process, so, Jared, and we talk about this all the time on our show, again, how they mm-hmm. you struggle through adversity. And I know Jared has a very interesting question to ask you because he's oh. dealt with learners in the classroom that stutter. Right, Jared? Right. And that's actually where I was um, – that's the direction I was going in here. But the, the comment that I had before that, what a powerful message that we're hearing from Corey – when he speaks to the young people of, you know, of, of the, the challenges he faced early on in life, and this is so significant because we see the end results so many times, and we just say, oh, everything was okay. But from Corey's message, what I'm hearing is, listen, folks, what you don't do well today, it doesn't mean you won't do it well later. It doesn't mean you won't become a star with what you struggle with today. So a, a young man, a, a young boy who who could only speak to the prettiest girls in class uh, in the school, <laughs> it, was difficult, it was difficult for him to speak to other people, now stands in front of thousands of people. So that's the message that I, I hear for our listeners, and that is what you don't, don't give up. What you don't do well today doesn't mean it won't change tomorrow or a year from now, or a decade from now. But, Corey, you mentioned your parents, and that was that was the safe place for you. And, and so many times in, in our therapy practice, we, we focus with families on providing your child with the safe place. And, and Neil kind of guided us towards this question already. You had your safe place. How did you get through school? How did you get through the times? You mentioned your size, but... but you know that other other people were saying something behind your back while you weren't there. How did you manage 
the challenges with peers? Well, I, I, you know, it's, it's funny that you say that, and, and I have to, have to also also add that that, um, and I share this every day, man. Listen, my greatest lessons in life have come from my from my greatest struggles. So, in other words, the things that I found found to be easy, I didn't really learn a lot from it. Okay, but the things that that have truly challenged me that were that were very very hard. Okay, because hear me, you're talking to a guy that was a smart kid, but guess what? I was labeled a slow learner. Why? Because I wasn't reading, and it wasn't that I couldn't read; I would stutter. So you couldn't read aloud. You couldn't read there aloud. We go. There we go. So I got labeled, you know, first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, and I remember coming. Coming, coming home, man, and I mean, I would literally cry, guys, like, you know, talking to my parents. I'm like, you know, what's wrong with me? And my parents, you know, along with my sisters and my brothers, kept basically re reassuring me there's nothing wrong with you. Stop looking at it from this, quote, unquote, um, point of view that there is something wrong. And that was the, I guess, the kind of shift, you know, as I told you guys, I, I, I keep going back to when I was 10. Um, I had a drastic, drastic shift, not just from, you know, talking to the girls and all that, but um, I had a situation where I was in church, church, church plays, all right? So every Easter, every, you know, Christmas holiday, Whatever you know, we did these did these church 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 plays, and I had a major major role in this in this in this play. And um, you know, we would go through the practice, man. And I would be stuttering because, again, for me, I could talk, but as soon as I had to read something, I would lock up. And I remember that Sunday, going to church, coming home, having to go back to church at like for like a four o'clock uh, uh, program, and. I tell my dad, I was like, I don't want to do this. You know, I'm nervous. I'm scared. I'm going to stutter. So my dad's like, you know how to do it. So I'm like, all right, cool. My mom comes in and is like, oh, no, he's going to do it because he's got other people counting on, on him. If he wasn't going to do it, he should not have taken that part five and a half or six, excuse me, weeks ago. Now, Keep in mind, guys, I'm 10, all right? This is a Sunday. It's supposed to be a peaceful day, and I'm listening to my parents go back and forth about, well, he, you know, he doesn't have to do it, he's going to do it. He doesn't have to do it, he's going to do it. Man, I'm feeling bad because I've created this argument or this this um, point of like, tension <laughs> with my parents. So ultimately... I go in and, and I pray. And I was like, wow. You know, I was like, God, you know, I, I didn't mean to start this. I said, but if for nothing else, could you just get me through this day? You know, can you, can you just get me, get me through this, through this, through this, through this place? Well, <laughs> fast forward, I ended up doing it, obviously, because my mom was, that, was certainly, certainly, certainly going, going to win out. I get there, guys, I do the play, don't study, it's a beautiful thing, and of course I'm happy in the end, like, wow. But that was a very valuable lesson. It wasn't about me stuttering. My mom was, was trying to basically teach me, you have to be accountable. Yes. You cannot start something in life and stop just because you don't feel like you are, quote-unquote, 100%, or, or you, know, you don't feel as if you're totally at your best. Exactly. Well, Corey, when we get back, we're going to go more into specifically you. W- w- this is the first one of the insightful players. We're really not going to talk about the career because ultimately that's when your life turned in the wrong direction. You changed your life in so many ways to the maturity that you are today after life after football. So we'll get back and learn more about how Corey changed his life, even though he had a successful NFL career and college career. He really wasn't on the right path till certain things changed. 
You're listening to the Total Tutor Show, powered by the Insightful Player Series. Again, go to simplyg.com and totaltutor.net, and we'll be back in just a moment. We're back to the Total Tutor Show, powered by the Insightful Player Series, Insightful Player Series, uh, insightfulplayer.com, and we can go to simplyg.com and totaltutor.net. And uh, we're with Corey Lucci, and we're learning really about specifically his resiliency. He really, with the stuttering, you know, what is he going to do in life? But Corey, you ended up having a very good uh, pro career. You played for around eight seasons. You had a great college career, but your life was empty in certain ways. And this is the first time ever we're not going to talk about the whole football story because ultimately the football story is not really the true story of Corey, is it? It's something else. (laughs) Yeah, you're right, guys. You're right. I, um, Oh, it's kind of funny sitting here now. Think about it. Um, I moved moved to New York City, man, in 2004, 2005 from Atlanta. Um, my life really changed in 2003. I lost my best friend, my hero, my you know, my rock. That was my dad. He um, had a heat, heat, heat stroke. And um, in a lot of ways, I like to say that was a day Corey had to grow up and had to had to become a man. Okay, um, now that's not to say I didn't still have some have some hurdles, but um, truly it was like, wow, you know what? I can't pick up the phone now and, and call him and ask him, "Hey, Dad, what did you think about this?" or uh, "What would you do about that?" Um, and unfortunately, as he was passing. I was in the process of selling a, a company and, unfortunately, going through a, a bitter, bitter divorce. So I moved from Atlanta to New York City. And what I know now is that I left running, okay? I didn't want to face, face a, lot of the, a lot of the issues. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to pick up and I'm going to move. And I got here. And life was great, you know. Uh, you know, land this great, great, great corporate, corporate, corporate job. I'm making more money than I ever dreamed of. And in fact, to be quite honest with you, I was making more money in the construction industry than I probably made playing football. Oh my! So I thought, I thought on, on, on paper, you know, my life was looking pretty good. But I don't know about you guys, but for me. Um, I'm a very humble person. Um, I I, I appreciate how and where I actually grew up. And New York City is a long way from Greenville, South Carolina. And um, what I realized quickly was that on the surface, I looked like I had it all, 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 all put together, you know, with the couple thousand dollar suit, eating at the best of the best hanging with the best of the best, you know, um, corporate deals, you name it. But deep down inside, I was very empty. And I would go home at night, and I would literally, you know, ask myself, what are you doing? You know, I mean, listen, Monday through Thursday, I never got home before 2 a.m. I would stick my key in the door. I'm telling you guys, Monday through Thursday, I would stick my key in the door around 2. I was back up by 5.36, leaving out the door again by 7, in my office by 8, 8.15. And it was all about the deal. For me, I lost my way. It was all about money. It was all about New York City. It was all about the fast, quote-unquote, life. And um, um, I got humbled because what I realized was that I had all the money in the world, but I didn't have peace. I had all the money and all the friends in the world, but I was losing myself, meaning I was at probably the worst state of my life physically, mentally. My health was was on a scale from one to one to ten. Honestly, it was probably a negative one. And um, I just had a birthday, October the tenth. And I went in to see my doctor, and he challenged me. He was like, um, I don't know what you're doing, but all of your numbers are up. And, and he simply said, he goes, listen, if you don't change, you will be dead in five years, oh. guaranteed. So 
Yeah, I don't know if you guys have ever had that type of, like, scare, but it was a wake-up call. I was like, what? You know, I'm, I'm looking at this guy like, no, wait a minute. I know I've gained some weight, you know, but I'm CL, CL, CL smooth, you know, big, big, quote-unquote sexy. And he was like, son, you know, you, you are 405 pounds. And I'd never heard that, heard that, heard that number, you know. I, I played around 320, 325. Um, I, and I knew I had gained some weight, guys, because – it got to a point where I had literally 10 of the same black suits, but they were all just different sizes, okay? Then I had five of the same gray suits, but they were all, what, different, different like, sizes. And um, he challenged me. He was like, look, um, you don't have to tell your clients or your friends what you're doing. He said, but uh, take a journal, put it inside your coat pocket, and just simply start writing down what you're eating. So, you know, me being a former former offensive lineman, we you know, we consider ourselves to be smart, smart, smart guys, right? So I take the journal, uh, excuse me, buy buy an actual journal, put it inside my pocket, but I don't really use it. You know, I am writing things down, but I've never really sat down and and tallied up stuff and um, if you guys can remember this, this seems like forever now, but October, roughly the 12th, uh, going into 08, the market tank. Um, and I mean, when I say tank, it tank. Lehman Brothers w- went under. Um, I was a partner at that time at a firm and, um, I knew things weren't quite right. You know, as I told you guys, I, I, you know, hey, I'm in New York City. It's, you know, all the glitz and the glamour. But um, I had no clue how my world was getting ready to actually change. So, um, you know, along with my doctor telling me, look, you need to make some drastic, drastic changes. Um, And then the market is essentially tanking. Um, I was forced. I was forced to just stop and to sit down and, and take a real assessment of my life. Right. And I'm telling you right now, I didn't like the guy that I saw in the mirror. I didn't like who I had, I guess, in a sense, turned into. Um, and the worst part about it was, on the one hand, you have all the money in the world, but then you have no help. Now... You had all the money in the world, but the company that you're partner, partnering with is essentially going down in flames, oh, okay? Um, and you have no help. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, you want to talk about a, a wake-up call. It's like, well, wait a minute. You mean to tell me I've been running these streets for the last five, six years, you know, 24 hours a day almost, trying to, trying to have something, and in the end, I lose half of my net worth? And I'm dying. Oh. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't need this. Corey, I don't wow, need this. Wow. So, I, mean, I just want to jump in for a second and tell Jarrett again, yeah, we're, so we're seeing this another one unbelievable story of Corey sharing his life and where he hit rock bottom, Jarrett. And this is what's amazing about these insightful players. They're really willing to show, show, share their true soul, what they truly feel when a lot of people will hide, Jarrett, about these stories, right? Oh, of course, and you know, and and metaphorically, you know, Corey talked about running from from uh, the south back up to the north, uh, literally doing that. But metaphorically, you know, the lifestyle he was living, uh, he was still running, and he was running from uh, a, a number of different factors. But you know, Corey talked about the wake up calls, and and a lot of us get these these wake up calls, these messages, but we don't all uh, listen to them. But what I want to ask Corey is. What made him listen this time? We, I, I can, we know that there's plenty of examples of people that have had these yes. wake up calls, but they just keep going in the direction they're going. It can't stop. Yeah. Them. Well, well, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> um, two things. Um, I like to say it was the worst day of my life, but but also the best day. Um, I, I, you know, went in to my to my former former office. Thinking I was going to sit down and have a have a man to man conversation with with one of my old old business business partners, 
It's, uh, God, I'm six foot eight. I'm now, you know, hovering around 300, you know, 290 or so, or, or, or so. But, you know, back then I was six foot eight, 405, five pounds. So I was a mountain, mountain of a man. And I could really easily in, 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 intimidate people, but that was not who, who, who I was. So, I go in and sit down and have this talk with this guy, and I'm basically telling him, like, look, you know, I don't know about you, but where I come from, people come up missing, bro, for far less the kind of money you know, we're talking about, and I don't get this. You know, it, it, why would you screw me, basically? Yes. And I can honestly tell you, I was having a having a pity party. I was having a what was me, you know? And um, things didn't end. And the best, um, I, I simply told him, I was like, you know, if you keep messing with me, I will physically hurt you. And that's when I realized, I was like, you know, it's just money. You have totally lost your way. It's just money. You are smart enough. You can go re you know, you can go make that again and again and again and again. Why are you willing to sit and to argue and fight with this guy that you know is up to, up to no good? More or less, why are you even willing to want to be in be in business with this type of type of a type of a type of a person? And um, I walked away, and, and at that time, I was I was living out in out in Bronxville, which is out in Westchester. And I called home, which is something I always do. Called my mom; she answered, and she was like, "You know what, baby? Why don't you just come home?" And I was like, "What?" She goes, I don't know why you're still there. She goes, I, you know, I don't know what what are you, are you trying to prove something to your own own self. She goes, why are you even staying in there? Why don't you just come home? And I got off the phone, man, and I'm and again. I literally had a a cry like I hadn't had in a long time. And through that, I reached inside my coat pocket, and what was there? My journal, that food quote unquote journal. And for the first time, guys. I tallied up my calorie count, which is what my doctor had been trying to get me to do anyway for almost almost four months. And I was astonished in the fact that I thought there was something wrong with my calculator, so I pulled out a pen and I started writing it, writing it, writing it down. And what I realized was that you know how the, how you hear people people say you know you are who you who you associate yourself with, and yes. you are what what you eat. Yes. So. Yes. I literally tallied up my calorie count, and for the sake of our sake of time and and our and your guys' show, I'll just come out with it. I was averaging fourteen thousand seventy-two calories a day. Oh my gosh! All right, oh. and that was a little bit of alcohol and a lot of food. And um, I didn't know what I was going to do, but I knew I had to make some drastic, drastic, drastic changes. And uh, you know, that was the bad. The bad part of it, but you know, the best, best, best part of it is, you know, again, I'm a former offensive lineman. We consider ourselves to be smart guys. I went in head first and I wrote down some things that I wanted to change. And the first thing was I was not going back into corporate. I, in other words, I prayed and I said, God, I want to make a dollar, but more importantly, I want to make a difference. I want to make a difference in the lives of everyday, ordinary people that have had struggles just like me. So whatever it is, I don't need to make a million dollars. I may never make another million dollars again, and I'm totally okay with that, but I want to make a living. I want to be able to feed my family, you know, live my life. And I want to change my health. And I want to change my eating pattern so that I can be an example. And what came out of it, guys, is a company called First in Life, I was a vegan for two years. I dropped over 110 pounds. Um, and I literally speak about this every day. So that's why you heard me preface this earlier, that my greatest struggles have been my greatest lessons. Because if we'd had this conversation even four years ago, I would have told you, man, you know, I'm, I'm, hey, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to figure this thing out. Exactly. Well, 
Corey. Sometimes. Yeah, I, I, yeah go ahead. Guys. I was just, just jumping at the last thing because we are running out of time. You you ended up fi- finding your partner who you played football with in Buffalo. And we're going to have him on the program in a couple weeks. But uh, what a tremendous story, Corey. Steve I guess, yeah, and we're going to we're going to have Steve on in a couple weeks. So, and you guys have a radio show as well. So go ahead and promote the radio show where we can find information on you, Corey. And honestly, I'm going to have to jump you on the line and uh, to, to finish. We might have to have a uh, part two of this interview and I'll have to let Chrissy know that so I can get back well, listen, and so Jared and I listen, can ask questions, hey, Corey. Hey, I was very honest. I said what? I used to stutter and now my friends tell me I can't shut up. Hey, so hey, I told you hey, that hey, 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 that's okay, Corey. That's okay, Corey. So uh because uh we have to get going. Where can we find information on you, Corey, and learn more about you? First in life, guys, www.firstfirstandandlife.com. Steve and I do a, do a show that, that comes on every Friday at 2, 2 p.m., and it's simple. Our, our tagline is, it's never too late to start living the first day of the rest of your life. Well, that's tremendous. Good luck, Corey. Good talking to you. And, Jared, another great, insightful player. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. And then again, thank you guys. Yeah, thank you, Corey. All right, take care, guys. All right. You're listening to Total Tutor Show on the Total Education Network, and we'll be back in just a moment.